what a bewildering few weeks we've been through. We've been through as a nation, as a church, the Church of England, and as a parish. It's been confusing and it's been bewildering and we've had to do new and uncomfortable things. We've had to learn new things about ourselves, of how we worship, what sustains us in our faith, what brings us to hope. It's been a time where we've been deprived, deprived of our ability to mix with family and friends, deprived of the ability to live lives as normal and deprived of the ability to enter our church, even for private prayer and certainly not for public worship. I've known that deprivation too, as clergy have been told that we're not allowed into our churches to pray and certainly not to record or live stream prayers or worship from our churches. So it's been the most tremendous privilege for me and my family to welcome you into our home as we've celebrated the Eucharist. We've celebrated it to the glory of God as we always do and in particular for the needs of our parish and all the people within it, for carers and key workers, for decision makers, those researching a vaccine and all in our world who, with many challenges abounding, are also having to cope with coronavirus. All that has been offered up to God, for the worship that continues in heaven is echoed on earth, and we've been capturing something of that. But I understand just how difficult that will have been for you. You'll have felt, perhaps at first, and may still feel, something of a spectator, as if you settled down on the sofa to watch what's going on. But I hope you've also felt drawn in to the worship that's being offered. It's an important move from being a spectator to a participant. And I hope that also gives us all a lesson and food to think about when we're back in church and worshipping in our, in our minster, in St George's, in St Andrew's, once again. There is hope and there is promise because on Sunday the 10th of May our Prime Minister will be making more announcements about how the lockdown will start to be eased and in anticipation of that um, all the clergy of the diocese have received a pastoral letter from our bishop, Bishop Christopher, as he outlines how this will begin to happen for the churches. It's not going to be dramatic and it's going to take a while. We have to plan for that. But we also see that we are walking out through the valley of the shadow of death and towards new and um, nourishing pastures as the table of the Lord will be spread before us once more. First of all, Bishop Christopher has said that in guide, in, along with the guidance of the House of Bishops, clergy will be able to go back into churches to pray and to live stream and record services from our churches. I hope that gives us a sense of connection once again with our temple, our holy place, our meeting place, encounter with God and with one another. But that's not enough. Later on, the churches will be open again for private prayer, but not yet. And it will be a little while before then public worship can resume, albeit with all the social distancing measures in place. Um, measures we became familiar with before the lockdown. Bishop Christopher quoted um, verses in his pastoral letter from the letter to the Romans, which actually I also uh, quoted in a recent pastoral letter as I reflected on the relationship between endurance and hope and how suffering um, fosters both of those. The verses were these. Therefore, since